So we're going to have five minutes of questions. Uh, I'll, I'll start things off uh, asking Candace a question. I, I, uh, yeah, I read a recent interview with you, and you said that there are two kinds of poets, learned poets and inspired poets. So I was wondering if you could expand on that and tell us, and tell us uh, what you mean by that and who you are. Well, I'm glad you asked that question, Alan. <laughs> On my many travels in this realm and the others, because I do visit others, I'm holographically able to pass through dimensions, and I've come across a lot of poets. Some dimensions have only learned poets, and some have only inspired. This dimension has both. So on the interview in this dimension, that's how I answer. And uh, I actually have had quite a few people over the years say that there are two types of poets, learned and inspired. And so I didn't coin the phrase myself. And what I believe the difference is, there's poets that just don't even really think about what they're writing. It's almost like it's channeled through them from another dimension. They don't work at it, it just it's channeled through them. They may go back and make a couple of little revisions, but they don't even think about, gee, I think I'll write about this. A couple of lines come and then the rest comes. Learned, they decide, I think I'll write about this and I'm not sure if I'll do it for years or shall I do it in form? How will I structure this? What will I do? I think that's the difference. There's planning and mechanics to learned and there's just a happening to be inspired. That's my belief. And of course, my belief's always correct. <laughs> okay, questions from the floor. Any questions? Speak up if you do. Oh, Dory's got one. I believe you didn't quite answer this question completely. What you are. What are you? What I am. <laughs> oh, God. I think I explained that in paths of possibilities. As many people around me, they don't really know who I am. Who is she, Oh, I know you could, but stay quiet, dear. <laughs> who are you and which are you? Yes. Oh, ooh, which am I? Or I, I'm definitely inspired. Definitely inspired. Divinely, right? Yeah. Divinely. I'm not. I'm not sure quite how. I remember Fred Cogswell actually told me that too. That there was learned and inspired poets, and that uh, I was an inspired poet. Never thought much about it. And I didn't think much about anything back in my young days. I just went, did stuff, and oh yeah, that's great. And then on to the next. But <laughs> what's that, Francie? Well, when you wrote a hundred sonnets or however many, were you more learned at that time? No, it was, it was very difficult for me. The first, I did it for a reason. I decided I'd always written free verse all my life. And in 2009, I believe it was 2009, I said, I'm going to force myself into form. I'm going to make myself write form poetry because I think if I do that and then go back to free verse, I'll have a different flow to it. And it actually, I did. When I went back to free verse, I did have a different flow, but when I wrote the sonnets, God, I said, I'll write 10. And I had a hell of a hard time writing them. They're really hard to write for me, because it had to be iambic pentameter. Da, 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 da. And it, it, it had to be just right, and I'm not a very detailed person. Anyhow, by the time I got to number 10, I quite liked writing them. I mean, I went through all the crap of getting used to writing them. So then, I've put together a manuscript for a book. And I thought everything was just great. And a friend back in New Brunswick said to me, you're not gonna publish that book like that, are you? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? He says, well, your I am, your am, am, I am, but pentameter is not right. I said, it's the way you're pronouncing the words. The way I pronounce them, it's right. <laughs> I was trying to argue everything I could so I didn't have to do the work and go back and change it to make it right. Anyhow, we stopped talking actually for about two months. He was so insulted and so was I. We just were pretty annoyed with each other. Anyhow, we did make it up because I eventually thought, you know, I, he's right. So I went back and I had to redo them all. But when you start redoing, it throws out your rhyme on the last line when you're trying to get your iambic pentameters correct. Your iam's got to be right. <sighs> must have taken me a thousand hours. It had, took me a long time, I finally got it right. 
And after that, I thought, well, you know, I should apologize because he was right. So I apologize. Now we're good <laughs> friends again because he was right. But I didn't want to do the work. We really don't want to go back and really work to fix something most of us. At least I don't. So that's that. Here you go, Alan. Okay, thank you very much, Candace.